Hi, this is Erling with Travel Trail Sail. I'm pretty excited today. I just got a new addition to our camp kitchen, a Blackstone griddle. And what I'm going to do with you today is we're going to walk through taking it out of the box, getting it all set up, and then seasoning the top so that I'm going from having it in the box all the way to being able to cook on it. So join me. Let's have an adventure and get this all set up. So this is pretty exciting. Let's go ahead. I've got a utility knife here and I can't wait to open it up. Alright, let us take a look inside. Okay. See, it's all nicely packaged up in here. We've got knobs. Looks like, what else have we got? There's a uh, gas regulator. But let's go ahead and slide this out and take a look. I'm going to turn it around so that it's right side up. Coming out. All right. Let's see, we got here's that gas regulator, and it's like an instruction manual that'll come in handy. Take off these foam sides. There's one. And here comes the other. Alright, there's the gas regulator. Looks like I have to cut that off. It's taped in there. There we go. Nothing else in the foam, so we're going to set those aside. I'm going to go ahead and take these out of the bag. go, gas regulator, and everything is wrapped in plastic, looks like here's the griddle top, I was mentioning we'll need to season that, um, you know, Judy and I were at the RV show this last year, we noticed all of the, well, several brands putting griddles like this into their camp kitchens, and uh, you know, we just have a two burner stove which isn't very useful and we were talking about how nice it would be to have a griddle like this. So, fortunately for Father's Day, look what I got. Alright, taking the plastic off of that. Pretty heavy. It's a uh, very robust griddle top. And we've got the bottom part here. I'm going to come around so you can see this a little bit better. Inside it's got this uh, burner in it, right? Uh, it's called an H burner and that's where the propane flame is going to be underneath the grill top. And then around on the front we've got the control knob and there's a drawer here, and that's where any grease or uh, drippings are going to go, so make it easy to clean up. We'll go ahead and take the plastic off of that. So pretty straightforward, just a couple of pieces of foam to take off. Uh, it is out of the box and we're ready to start setting it up. I'm just looking.
looking at the label. Look at all those yummy things we can make with this. French toast, pancakes, bacon, sausage. Looks pretty yummy, huh? So we need to take that description off and check this out. There's a uh, little hole in it, but you can see how reinforced it is on the bottom. It's got legs on it. And then actually when you are uh, not using the griddle, my understanding is that the lid will store right on top. Now, I've ordered a carry bag for it as well. That should be coming any day now and we'll have a way to transport this along with our other camp, kick, uh, camp kitchen gear. Now, where does the gas hook up on this? Looks like there's a uh, black plastic on the side here. So we can take that and uh, take that off. I'm guessing that's where the regulator's gonna go. It's anything like the other stoves we've used. Yep, true enough, there is a, uh, a turns, right? We're going to insert that in there. You have to kind of press it in a little bit to get it to go. And that just tightens right on there like that. So that's good and snug. We don't want to have a gas leak. Uh, what we can do now is attach either a green propane cylinder or our big one. I'm going to find one of those right now and then we'll start putting that on. So the next step in using the Blackstone griddle, getting it set up, will be to connect it to gas. You need to have a supply of gas as it is a, just like a Coleman camp stove or a portable Weber grill, you need a source of gas. Now you can use these small green cylinders and they're an okay source. You know, you could use that for a Coleman lantern or for a cook stove like that. Uh, you'll need one for each of the devices that you're using, but you simply twist that in and you've got gas for cooking. So that's uh, a good way to do that, but I find if I'm out camping for a long period of time and, and I'm not backpacking, uh, that it's better to have a larger supply of gas. So we'll take that off, set it aside. And what we're gonna use is a large gas cylinder. You need to have the right hose though. Let me show you. There's two kinds of uh, gas hoses for camp kitchens. Uh, this is a regular kind of a hose and this is what you'd use if you're using a tree. But if you're connecting directly to the propane tank, you'll actually need this hose. Let me show you up close. You have uh, a larger knob that connects to the propane tank and then a smaller end that will connect to your stove or lantern or whatever it is that you're trying to power. The regular hoses have a smaller end. There's one that would connect into a propane tree and then the end that would connect into your appliance. What, I, what do I mean by a tree? So this is really neat. You can put this tree in, see the large knob just like what I was showing on uh, the other hose, but this tree then connects to your propane tank and provides you multiple places where you can connect up things. So with the extension on it, I can put that on top and now I have a, a stand that I can put a uh, gas lantern as well as a grill and now my Blackstone griddle. So all of those things can connect up to your propane tank with a tree. For today though, we're just connecting up the griddle. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the big green hose to the propane tank. Make sure that's nice and tight. And then we will take the other end and connect that to our Blackstone griddle. Here we go. Might have to give it a little pressure to push it while you're turning and then you just turn that in. Make sure it's again nice and tight. Now with our gas connected, 
we would be ready to start cooking. That actually, the cooktop will fit right on there. It's got some legs so that it's like a little bit of air can circulate between the uh, H-shaped burner and the cook stove. But before I use this, it does have to be seasoned. Uh, and, and before I can season it, it actually has to be cleaned because it came from the manufacturer and it feels a little sticky. So rather than turn the burner on right away, what I'm going to do is actually clean this a little bit. Uh, I have to clean off any residue that might have come from the manufacturing process and then we'll use some heat and some oil to season this just like we would if we were doing a Dutch oven or a cast iron pan. So that way, with a little bit of oil and heat, we're going to have a really durable cook uh, top to be able to griddle whatever we want to griddle. So I'm going to get the supplies for that. I'll be right back. So before you can actually use the griddle top, like I mentioned, uh, it may have a little bit of sticky residue left on it from manufacturing, uh, and we need to clear that off before we can uh, go ahead and season it and use it. So. What I have is a small bin, a little Tupperware, with uh, some lightly soapy water in it. Just a few drops of soap. Just enough. You can use paper towels if you like. Although I do find that paper towels, they can leave little bits of cloth or little bits of paper uh, on your griddle. So if you can, better to have some rags along. We always bring rags for cleaning and you never know when you need them. So we've got a supply of those in the camper. and. I'm just going to go ahead and get a little bit of light, lightly soaked water and we're going to go ahead and give this a wipe down and I'm going to keep going until all the stickiness is gone and then I will get some oil to season it. So I will be back in just a minute with all the things I need. Paper towels will come in handy for seasoning though because um, it's a great way to rub some oil or a conditioning product on your griddle top. And when you're done cooking, you're going to want to use that same oil to help protect the surface. It's the same as if you had cast iron. That's feeling a lot better when I have a second rag in which I can dry it with. So I'm all done cleaning the griddle top, ready for seasoning, but I just thought I'd show you. You might be curious about the griddle. One of the things I'm seeing is uh, during the manufacture process, they have left a few marks on here. There's some scratches and you can see there's parts like on this corner here that uh, are pretty, they don't have a, a black coating on them yet. All the corners have that. All along the edge, there's actually, I'm um, just trying to get close enough for you to be able to see that, uh, but it is, instead of being black, it actually has some silvery marks now too. Um, so when I condition this and season it, I'm going to try and put a little bit of oil on the top and sides too, see how that goes. But it's a little disappointing to see, you know, manufacturing marks like that one right out of the box. On the bottom, you can see how it's welded, but you can also see that, you know, it's, it's uh, got some rub marks, got some little leftover bits on it. But generally it's pretty heavy duty and pretty robust. And I'm gonna put this on the top of the, the base and get started on seasoning. So one of the bags that came in here is what look like knobs, they're actually legs. They have a screw on there and a rubber uh, surface. Those will help keep this up from whatever you're placing it on. Good safety factor, I suppose. So I'm just gonna screw those in. Those go in real easy. There's four of them, four legs. So you can see what I'm doing, it's just as simple as putting those in. And now when I set the griddle down, it's going to rise up from the surface that I've got it on. And you can use these on uh, a metal cook table like I'm using or on a, 
a picnic table, whatever works for you, but I, I prefer to have some kind of a, a fairly heat proof surface. Okay, to season the griddle, uh, again it takes oil and heat, and what I have here is just some canola oil, and you can use pretty much any kind of oil. Uh, Blackstone does make a special product that you can use called a seasoner and conditioner, but if you don't have that or just have some oil around, that'll work just as well. Right, I've got a paper towel and I've got some oil. Just going to dab the paper towel in the oil. And we're going to put a light coat on. What you do want to do is build up multiple light coats rather than one thick coat. That's why you're going to be repeating this process a few times. If it gets to be too thick a coat, you can run into problems with the uh, surface that you're creating. Uh, it can end up having defects in it, and then you'll have to, at least in the case of cast iron, you end up having to strip those parts down and start all over again with your seasoning. So better to do it right the first time, and just wiping this down with some thin coats of oil. And now I've got a thin coat of oil rubbed all across the surface of the blackstone. So we're going to go ahead and, and turn this on for the first time, and we'll see how well our seasoning worked. We'll again have to repeat that a few times, but let's give it a shot. So on the front here is a knob. Uh, it has light and high and then settings on it. There's actually a sparker inside, so when you turn it past the light button, it's going to spark and ignite. So I've got the gas turned on and I'm ready to give this a try. So let's turn on the knob. You heard the click and I can hear the flame going, so we're going to leave that on high and we're going to let that run. It may take as long as 15-20 minutes to bring it up to temperature. We should start to see smoking on the griddle top and we want to smoke off all of that oil. We'll let it cool down and, and we can uh, do that again. Now you could leave it hot and with a pair of tongs continue to oil it. Uh, just to make sure I get into all of the nooks and crannies of the, uh, the corners of the griddle, I'm going to go ahead and, and let it cool off in between each time to make sure I'm spreading the oil uh, well. But you could leave it hot and, and just use a tongs to spread it with a paper towel. So now comes the patience part, right? We've got the heat on and we're just going to sit back and, and let it heat up and we'll watch for the smoke. We've been heating for a few minutes and I think you can start to see the heat coming off the griddle. It's really starting to smoke. Notice how it's starting to turn brown in places. That, that is the seasoning process. It's starting to turn brown and uh, that's what exactly what we want at this point. So if you look at the cooktop, you can see how it's turning brown, but you can see the H pattern emerging. That's from those burners underneath that's in the shape of an H. When I'm griddling, I'm going to have to be careful where the heat is, because I think there's going to be parts of the griddle that are hotter than other parts. So I've done one round of seasoning, and it's time for round two. I'm going to put oil all over the grill again, and burn, uh, fire it up to add some heat. Hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a nice seasoned grill.
Well, you can see we've really got this griddle smoking, and I did end up switching over, uh, adding a little bit of more oil in between cycles, just to keep things going. So uh, you can see a lot of smoke, and, and I don't know if you can see here, but the griddle is actually looking almost blackened, at least the middle part of it is, and that's starting to spread out. So it was uh, initially dark where the H burner is underneath, but as we've been blackening it and seasoning it, uh, it's actually starting to spread out to cover the whole griddle top. So we're going to keep on going. It's a time-consuming process, but uh, I know in the end we're going to have a great cooktop. We've got our Blackstone griddle mostly seasoned now. The color on the top has turned to dark brown and black, and we've got a fairly even coat across the whole surface. Now to get that, in the end, the H burner was mostly only heating up this part, so I used a cast iron cookware secret. I put a thin layer of oil over it, put it on my Weber gas grill, cranked it up to about 300 until it started smoking, and then let it finish seasoning. So you can always do that just like you would with a Dutch oven or a cast iron skillet. When you're done cooking with this, it's important that you just use water and you can scrape it if you need. Uh, but you'll just, if it's like cast iron, you probably won't want to put soap on it. Uh, so a thin layer of oil to keep it protected between uses. And over time, this seasoning is going to get stronger and, and uh, better protection so you'll have a better surface the more you use it. I myself can't wait to get started. The only question is what to cook first. Am I going to make hamburgers, bratwurst, pancakes? Oh, the decisions, I, I just don't even know. But if you come back for a future video, you'll find out exactly what we did. I've got planned uh, a review of some different utensils to go with the Blackstone. We've got spatulas and things to take a look at. So watch for our future videos, and to make sure you don't miss one, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I can't wait to see you in the campground. Uh, this is Erling for Travel Trail Sale, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.